everybody welcome back to the crystalline perspective on this channel i do all things nursing planning crafting and lifestyle related if you're interested in the topic above stay tuned <music> Hey guys so we're back again i know i told y'all i was coming back so let's talk about the critical care practicum that was this summer term this was the last clinical that i had to take in order to complete the um uarc or university of arkansas fayetteville online lpn to bsn program so guys this class was by far my fave now if you watched my previous video which i'll link up here somewhere i did talk to you guys about the eight week professional nursing synthesis capstone clinical course as well as the um critical care didactic course and um you'll see that i was not a fan of the actual critical care course um we just wasn't besties but that's okay um the critical care practicum which if you guys may or may not know i am a hands-on learner i do learn by audio and visual but typically it's that tactile learning that gets me putting my hands on it feeling it figuring it out for myself those are the, that is the type of learner i am and knowing what type of learner you are will help you to get the most success in whatever program you decide to do so before we get to critical care, the professional nursing synthesis practicum or clinical, you did not physically go to any type of clinical. Like I stated in the previous video, I kind of told you guys all about it. You do assignments and basically those assignments equate to hours. So that course was you had to do 75 hours and basically you had to spend 75 hours doing your presentation project things you can't you couldn't count the ati inclex portion but what you could do was that you could count the um if you was researching something in the school's online library or if you were doing an ihi module which those are basically like little modules that you can do that can help you with nursing leadership and some um patient patient experience patient safety things in nursing so that class it was 75 hours like i said it wasn't you didn't physically go report to anywhere that was at your own home wherever you did your project and of course anytime you spent meeting with your preceptor you also counted that as time as well because you will meet with your preceptor here or there to discuss different things about your project now critical care y'all i know if you watched my video i'll link it up here somewhere my ovp's practicum video that i did like a year ago i told y'all that was my favorite cl um, clinical or practicum however y'all want to say it but i'm gonna say clinical because that's easier to say so um i loved obps i loved it i loved it but y'all critical care trumped them all baby when i tell you guys that i never thought of myself as a critical care nurse like never and i've worked ltech units where they have like half of it is critical care half of it is med surge no i was all heart set on ob or pediatrics like that is where i was working to get to until i met mrs critical care and y'all while the didactic portion is a beast when you get into the clinical and you start doing the actual clinical with the didactic it's magic it is magic so like any other clinical uh, for the professional nursing synthesis clinical we didn't have to do like dosage cal or anything like that because that is a capstone practicum but in critical care you did have to do a um critical care um it was a dosage cal you had to do like practice a practice b i'm trying to remember it all y'all because it's been about two months ago uh well not two months ago but a few weeks ago let me say it that way 
but what actually has been two months ago since I've had to do that part because I took I started the classes back in May so anyway basically you had to do like your um dosage calculations before you could get to your final dosage calculations you have to do a and b and those basically just they're just like practice but you still have to make 100 percent. and then of course you take your final dosage cal um it's the dosage calculations things um doing milliliter per hour doing drops per minute of course doing a milligram to a tab or a capsule those type of things so took your dosage calculations um test passed it once you pass those just cal dosage calculations then you are eligible to move on to actually starting clinical hours now like any other clinical at the school there are assignments within the clinical course so we had a few ati assignments like we had a pharmacology ati assignment we had a titration of drugs. We had a TPN assignment because typically those things you typically do in a critical care setting. Um, you would do them in med surge if need be, but we're not titrating any drugs. But TPN, you may or may not see that in the um, med surge setting. It depends. You may. It just it just kind of depends on the hospital. And then we also did parental nutrition, which is basically like. NG, OG, J2, those type of things. So th there were like little case study videos. And then of course there was questions and things you had to answer. The bulk of the work was spent on case logs. So there were two case logs that you had to do. And then in addition to those two case logs, you had to also do a... Um, so you have the two case logs. You also have to do an, an assessment and medication administration check off. And that was typically like the first thing that you did. So my clinicals failed the last three weeks of the, di the eight week didactic course. Now keep in mind, the clinical course is 10 weeks long. So you get 10 weeks to do your clinical hours. For critical care, you did have to spend, you do 75 hours in all. 60 of those hours are spent going to the hospital, doing your skills or whatever. Um, and the other 15 hours, you basically got those during any type of classwork. So the ATI things, the dosage calculations, all of that was a part of the actual, like it's actual clinical hours, which equates to the 75 hours. And then you can also count your case log but i think it was only like worked an hour or so of time can't really remember because i tossed everything <laughs> when, when i say tossed everything i tossed like all of the notes and stuff which i mean it's not notes it's the syllabus information which i'll talk about that in a second so when it comes to the um clinical basically i did mine like I did my two Sundays with three Sundays in a row and I went on two Tuesdays and that was perfect timing because I was able to go ahead and get it done and I also was able to see quite a bit. So on my first day there, I had to do my assessment, I had to do my med administration and I had to do case log and the case logs are anywhere from like 10 to 12 pages because of the amount of information you have to put in it. The assessment your preceptor basically go in with you. You guys do a thorough assessment on the patient head to toe. Um, and I say you guys only because your preceptor, of course, have to be present with you when you're doing patient type things like giving meds and assessments and things like that. So um, basically, my preceptor, we did the assessment and she was like, oh, my God, really, really good job. She wrote down some things I could work on. And then I did two med passes with her. So that first day coming out the gate, I was able to titrate some am 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 amodorone. I can't talk, y'all. And basically that um, is it's basically a vasopressor that is used to kind of help boost people's blood pressure up. So I got a chance to titrate it down. But when we did that, the patient didn't like it. So we had to increase it back up. 
And so the patient that I had on the first day, he had hepatic encephalopathy, which is a very difficult disorder to deal with. He also had acute respiratory failure. And that is when I stated in my first video that essentially critical care is like a med surge on steroids, meaning, meaning, and I'm not saying that to say, oh, it's just no, it's it, this is hardcore work because you're really having to think and keep a watch on these patients because they literally can go to zero to 100 like quick. And so anyway, this patient, like he basically, he had, he already had a history of diabetes and cirrhosis, but those two those two disorders like escalated into a multitude of disorders, which landed him on the ventilator, you know, also landed him not being able to get proper nutrition. And when I say proper nutrition, the TPN and the um, peritoneal nutrition that is given, those things are fine. But at the end of the day, they're not really giving the patient everything they need you really need your gi system to work in order to fully get you know the proteins carbs all those things that you need in order for your body to fully function so coming out the gate he basically was a lot so i did my case study on him the case study consisted of like a background of the patient um you gave a little bit of history on them some education that you did a nurse your nursing assessment and you literally went through each segment in that case log you also had to do like your um you had to do like your um lab interpretations your drug interpretations and the drugs was like not look in the drug guide and say this is what this medication is for why this patient is using the medication because i actually had a patient who was using a medication that really that I didn't even really know. I I didn't really know that it was used for something other than GERD, but apparently it could be used for hypotension. So that was pretty cool. So basically, and then of course you had to do like an ev evidence-based practice. So you had to pick an article and basically talk about the article. And then there was questions. Really, really, really multifaceted assignment. So that was that. And my preceptor happens to be the charge nurse so we went on a few rapids so a few of the rapids were very successful unfortunately some of the rapids the patient turned into a cold blue and of course they didn't make it um the rapids could have been anything from the patient couldn't breathe to the patient is unresponsive not unresponsive they're responsive but they blacked out type deal um there was all types of action but then there were some days that were like chilled. Um, I do remember that there were a situation where uh, unfortunately it was kind of sad. A patient organs were donated because that patient's condition couldn't improve. Um, a lot of patients unfortunately expired because of their conditions. And I saw a lot of COVID patients there on the ventilator. So we were doing a lot of proning patients and basically, you know, supining patients like flipping them back over and getting all the secretions out and masking and gowning up and all of the things so it was just one of those things where it was just like wow like it's crazy how a disorder can go from like this big to like this big um, there was one patient that I had the pleasure of working with and she basically was a diabetic type 1 Unfortunately, she went into diabetic ketoacidosis, ended up going into a coma. This they had to take her bone flap out, which essentially that means that they take a part of whatever side they take the skull out, and that side is like flat. So it's literally like you could feel that person's brain. So you want to be extra, extra careful. And in hopes that her brain, the swelling would decrease and that she would be able to regain function, but unfortunately she didn't. And the thing is, that's just one of the things of how it is when it comes to various like chronic health disorders. Some of the patients were acute health disorders. So they may have had COVID and they may were just doing normal person, Maybe they was bowling or something. And the next thing you know, they got COVID. 
their lungs and alveoli couldn't do proper gas exchange in the alveoli within their lungs in the base of their lungs and basically caused the patient to go into acute respiratory failure patient is now on a ventilator covid which is a very rough virus takes over the lungs causes all of this infection patient has pneumonia patient still on the ventilator patients get trait patient still on a ventilator to the point to where they need now a double lung transplant those are really hard to come by so i saw a ton of things in the critical care clinical which was so amazing one of the things that was the coolest was a patient we got called to a rapid the patient was um he was in super ventricle super ventricular tachycardia like he was in SVT bad. Like y'all, we walked in the room, the guy's heart rate was 194. And he was just like, yeah, I feel funny. And we're like, sir, lay down, calm down. Let's figure this out. And so, um, of course, when the acute care APRN step on the scene, the doctor step on the scene, they give you orders. So a denison was pushed. We watched the guy's heart rate go down from 194 to like 92. And we were like, okay, two seconds later, not even um, being dramatic, not even being extra right now. Two seconds later, guy's heart rate jump up to 210 and it's sitting there. And they push a denison again, don't bump it. So we had to basic, basically cardiovert this patient. I was able to see a cardio version and it was so cool. Um, and I know that sounds, it wasn't cool for the patient, but for us staff members, it was cool. And for a nursing student like me, it was really cool. So anyway, the doctor of course gave the patient something to make him sleep. Um, he gave him propofol. I wanna say it was about five milligrams, not milligrams, five milliliters. And basically that like knocked him out in like a second and then the doctor was like, everybody clear, everybody clear, shock, a shock initiated, shocks the patient, and then heart rate, like, is in check. Like, oh my gosh, so, so, so cool. So, um, we basically got a, I basically got a chance to see something like that. I also got the opportunity to go to the OR and see the surgeon insert um, a trach on two patients that was super cool like y'all the OR is a really cool place however there's not a lot for the nurse to do like it's a cool place like opening the, the um cutting through the tissues and like seeing the organ like seeing the actual trachea Y'all, that was so phenomenal. Like, it actually looked like it looked in a book. It's just pink. Like, y'all, it was exciting. So, the OR is a cool place. It's just that the nurse literally does nothing. And I'm not going to say that they don't do anything. They, they do have a really tough job of, like, making sure they record things. But for me, I'm a very hands-on person. And so... I want that hands-on. I want to be up there with the surgeon in the body cavity. Let's do it. So that was pretty cool. So on and on, critical care, the clinical was phenomenal. Um, I successfully did a great job on both case logs. And I ended up, of course, passing the practicum with, it, with an A um, because I just simply was blown away by everything that I learned. Like I said, once I learned the things, it made it so easy for me to be able to just understand the material in the course. Things really start making sense. So much so, I have embarked on revamping my life. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been, it was an amazing experience. Like the times I went to clinical were all amazing. Unfortunately, some of the situations were sad, but ultimately I learned so much. And that is like one of the my favorite things about this program. And I'm not gonna tap into too many favorites before, um, 
before I end this video is that once you do get everything situated with clinical, because clinical can be hectic, like finding a preceptor and all of that. But once everything is situated, it's really awesome being able to go into clinicals by yourself. You don't have to fight with your peer. You don't have to fight with this classmate on whether you're going to get a chance to learn. And this opportunity or that opportunity is strictly you. And you are in charge of how much you learn, how much you see, how much you do. And that is the part that I love about the critical care experience. Because like I said, I was able to advocate for myself. My preceptor was like, well, our patient's gonna go to surgery. And I said, I've never been to the OR. I've never been to surgery. And she said, oh, well, I'm gonna ask the doctor if you can go. Ask the doctor, he said, yes. So I basically had to change scrubs, change into the hospital scrubs. And I went to surgery twice and it was cool. It was cool, cool, cool. So yes, guys, that was critical care practicum, clinical. It was amazing. Um, one of the best clinicals I have taken in this program, hands down. And I do understand that critical care may not be for everybody, but what I will say is that if you are in this program, find that clinical that makes you feel good about becoming a nurse. Or we're not become we are becoming a nurse, but we are already a nurse being a nurse that's what i'm trying to say find a clinical that makes you feel amazing about being a nurse and from that moment you then seek opportunity in that area because you just may be offered a job you just may be offered a recommendation for a job you never know what can come up so that's it guys that is it the summer term is over i am 100 percent complete with this program <laughs> and i am currently studying for nclex rn um i have already submitted to have boards and we're gonna be successful like y'all keep going the program is tough it's tough for a reason because if it was easy everybody will be out here doing it if it was easy everybody would basically be you know nurses and everything else but it's one of those things where you have to decide that this is what you want and you have to fight for it and i'm gonna be honest with y'all i fought tooth and nail this summer for this opportunity so i am excited i do have my bscn degree i'm just waiting on them to mail it and i'm just sitting waiting to um take boards I did get a temporary license because um, life has just been different. And my old job, I'm, I'm not rushing anything, but it's just time for me to move on. And you, you kind of get that. At first, I wasn't going to get a temp license, but who knows? I may take the test before my temp license. I may get my temp license before my test. Who knows? But what I do know is that we are going to be successful. I'm going to successfully pass this in clicks RN. You guys are going to successfully pass whatever other classes you got to take, as well as if you are a part of um, this summer cohort, you are also going to pass your NCLEX. So guys, y'all have an amazing semester. I do have more videos coming. I will be dropping a video on my thoughts should you or should you not attend this program as well as a few other videos i also have to reveal to you guys where i'm going to work we'll talk about it but please remember to like comment and subscribe um guys i'm always over on instagram so check me out over there and the blog is coming back, so stay tuned for that. Like the blog, it's coming back. It's going to be consistent, God, guys. I'm getting my life together. It's coming back. It's coming back. So, until our next video, you guys have a bum day. Bye.